Yes, I think I'll have a look around New Cemetery now. I'm just about two minutes away from Belgrade New Cemetery, where many famous Serbian people and famous people of the Yugoslav days are buried. But there's also a Commonwealth war grave section to remember those Commonwealth forces who got involved in Yugoslavia in World War II. There should be a few hundred uh, marble tombstones there. I would assume mostly British. I reckon a few Canadians that are buried there. I also think there might be some Australians or some New Zealanders. You never know. But um, we're looking forward to my visit to a new cemetery of mine. I mean, I haven't been to a cemetery at all. Even though it's a great day in Biograd, I still think, you know, it's kind of an okay day. It's only rained a little bit. I'm not that mad about that rain. Just, uh, what I'm concerned about is uh, <laughs> how many daylight hours I now have a day to like look around town before it gets too dark. You see, when I try filming in the dark with this camera, it's, it's just horrible. It's just, it just turned out so great, I guess. Well, I am nowhere inside of New Cemetery, but I'm the walking distance away, and I just found a place where people, I assume he fought for Tito, um, they're probably buried in this area with all these stones, or maybe they're just memorial stones, I'm not too sure. So, got like a list of people I assume died in World War II. Uh, Some of us have to photograph their ancestor right there. Oh, oh yeah, and there's the main entrance of Belgrade New Cemetery. Uh, so, got people here of the Voyage, Vojdanska, Divinska. Um, hmm. Oh, right here's this. Um, that's another stone. <laughs> hmm. More names on the memorial, and then we have the centerpiece of the memorial a partisan fighter with his rifle and um, stepping on a like this is like a bit of a barrel to me. So, I should not be playing hopscotch in here, seriously, very disrespectful. Um, yes. And here it is. He's got his um, red star insignia. Uh, his rifle. I like. Um, I don't like what type of like gun he has. It wasn't AK forty sevens. AK forty sevens didn't weren't invented until after World War Two. Yeah. Yes, and more names for the Roll of Honor right here. So th this wall basically says what happened in October 1944 when Yugoslavia was liberated from the Nazis. Talking about like all these people involved with kicking Nazi Germany uh, out of Yugoslavia. And, uh, Clark here to um I think it says something like thirteen 
95. Uh, numbers, um, yeah. Well, uh, here we are, front entrance to the new cemetery. They call it an open air museum. This is the map, the new cemetery of Belgrade. And the British cemetery is all the way back at number 14. So, right here, they were up all around, snake around, and I'll get the very back end. Yes. Yes, the cemetery knows how to keep families together. I mean, like, look at this one here. You've got like people from 19th century, and then from 1932, this one died in 1993. This is what you call like, keeping generations and generations together. The other day on like Simple History, they had a video of this woman from Serbia, or back in the Yugoslavian days. She was flying on a Air Yugoslavia flight as a flight attendant. The plane was blown up over Czechoslovakia. And then so uh, she survived falling 30,000 feet. And and because of that, she got a Guinness World Record and she was a bit of a celebrity. But then, towards the end of the 80s, she was fired from a job as an air hostess. And uh, she died, like, like, a really quiet like life in her own house in Belgrade. She's buried in the cemetery, but I wouldn't know whereabouts. It's only because this website of the cemetery, it doesn't explain, like... Uh, where she's buried. Like, you put in her name in either Cyrillic or Latin and it doesn't, like, come up. So, literally, they're not really treating her like a, a famous, uh, they're just basically treating her like an ordinary person. I'm now at the, I think, like, the very end of the Belgrade New Cemetery. I mean, the road's on the other side of this wall. Um, I still haven't found the British War Cemetery yet, I know it's number 14, but I decided to have like a look around to see if I could find any other different faiths buried here. I found a few Muslim graves that are buried in the back. Um, I've seen a few stars on people's graves, it kind of means that, well, maybe they were Marxist, or they don't really care, just like, like that one, or maybe that probably meant he was in the Yugoslav army. Yeah, so it's such a really nice like construct the cemetery. I mean, to save space, you mostly got like wall vaults to put ashes in. Like I would assume everywhere around here, these are just like um, small square plots to put the ashes, and then you could like bury somebody properly in a coffin, like through here. But I mean, you know, coffin burials always tend to take up a lot more space than than urn burials, you know. Now this is a really nice monument I see here. Now these people, uh, I guess, uh, they quite could be famous and all. They're probably military, but then this one here, it's to commemorate World War One. You know, like all what it took to start World War One was basically a Bosnian Serb in Sarajevo, shooting dead, Franz Ferdinand, the Archduke of Austria-Hungary. And then the war broke out. Yes. War broke out. And you got the cross up there, the, the four, like, uh, five and seas. Like, Only unity can save the Serbs. Something like that. You can uh, correct me if you like. But it's quite a really beautiful monument to remember those Serbs who died in World War One, because Yugoslavia wasn't formed until after World War One. So, at the time, it was like the Kingdom of Serbia, and parts of modern-day Macedonia were actually part of uh, the Kingdom of Serbia. In front of me, I notice a Russian Orthodox cross right there. When I turn around here, we've got a monument for the, the Russian Empire from 1914. So I'm guessing a lot of people in this area were in the Russian army, especially with all the amount of like Russian Orthodox tombstones. So just recently, uh, because it was Armistice Day, like about a, almost a week ago, they had like ambassadors of various countries leaving like reefs, 
And I'm certain that at the British Cemetery there will be ambassadors of Commonwealth countries who have also left wreaths. Hmm. So it says like two million, two million people died because of that war. And a lot of these people here, because of their Russian Orthodox ties, I assume these are like Russian emigres who escaped to Yugoslavia after the start of the Soviet Union. I see a cross of remembrance over there, so I'm getting really closer. But there's one thing I really want to see up here. It's like a really big mausoleum. And I think it's to do with somebody from the Principality of Serbia days or Kingdom of Serbia days. I'm not really too sure. So it looks like it's all fenced off and locked away. Typical. But hopefully the plaque should tell me a little bit more. Um yeah, uh, so it's like Austrian, German, or Hungarian soldiers of 1914, 1918. Yes, and yes, uh, definitely German, um, or German Austrians. I've seen a lot, a lot of these German war graves uh, elsewhere around the world. I've seen these in, in uh, Reykjavik, and I've... Reykjavik is the only place in the world I've seen them. There are German war graves in Papua New Guinea, because Papua New Guinea, the northern part, was actually part of the German Empire. But the Aussies overtook it at the start of World War One. Yep, I found it. But um, I think there might be a padlock. I was told on the Commonwealth War Graves Commission website that uh, it is padlocked, but they gave me the combination code. I wish I'd just written that down right now. A Italian military cemetery to commemorate those from 1918 to 1928. Kind of reminds you of like French wall graves, like that. Um, yeah, can't get in. Uh, but uh, anyway, the Italians and the Yugoslavs really did fight a lot for the coast of um, Yugoslavia. Like places I went to, like Pula and bits of Slovenia, like they really wanted that. Even like did you remember like Trieste? Like after World War Two, Trieste was like its own thing for a couple of years under like UN administration, and then it was like divided between Italian and Yugoslavian territory. Well, anyway, the Pila Cemetery they like to like lock this gate up here. Uh, the Commonwealth War Graves Commission basically gave me the number code, but yeah, I forgot to write it down, and it seems like I can't even like change it. So, anyway, um, in the distance, you can see familiar headstones. Like, I can see a uh, New Zealander over there. Um, I, I can see a lot of British airmen over here. Uh, there's a Polish man uh, over there, a few Poles. She, uh, and, and there's even like some separate ones, because uh, I think a news reporter was actually uh, buried also here, and so was a diplomat. So they're like buried separately, excuse me, yeah. Um, it's, it's quite a shame that uh, they have to like lock this, even like in daytime. Like, come on, look, it's, the cemetery is open from nine till like four-ish, five-ish, six-ish at night. Um, you could at least like just open it up for some like people who, who have relatives buried here, I guess, you know, come from abroad. Their ancestors died fighting in the Yugoslavia, World War II. But anyway, the people from the embassies, I guess, like the British Embassy, they left the reef here on Armistice Day on the 11th of the 11th, last week. And that's a traditional thing to do every 11th of 11th uh, at a Commonwealth War Cemetery, like leave a uh, reef of honor. So I just had to jump over the fence just to get in. Uh, the code is 2435, but I had a hard time like with that bike lock. So I thought, you know, I'm just going to jump over the fence. So here we've got a total tally of people buried here. 355 British, 
23 Canadian, 27 Australian, 15 New Zealand, 43 New South African, and other allies 18. Uh, yeah. So uh, the cemetery was built and is maintained by Commonwealth War Grave Commission. Uh, so let's get looking. British airmen right here. More British airmen. Um, actually, I should have put my glasses on to clearly. I uh, can't really see clearly. Uh, excuse me. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah so I see much clearer with my glasses on. Oh, and a few people have left mementos to their relatives, aged only 20. British airmen. British airmen. Um, oh, Royal Canadian. Um, these stones are kind of really, really getting old though. Now we do have an, a few non commonwealths so we have a Polish man here, airmen, 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 British Air, Ro British Air Force, South African, uh, 1944, December, a British soldier of the war, uh, okay, and then a few Polish troops up there, uh, two people buried together, unknown, uh, Royal Air Force, Royal Air Force. Oh, Royal Australian. Yes, we have an Australian right here. That's, that's a good thing. Um, a, a, a Italian man right here. Yeah. So going through the fields, we have a New Zealander. That's uh, quite really special to me because I'm part New Zealander. My great uncle was also involved in Egypt and Libya. So where I see a silver fern, that's really special to me. And we've got a few Canadians, British Airmen, South African. Royal Artillery British, a few more Polish troops right here. Like, you know, the Poles had joined up with the British in World War II. Um, a Jewish British Royal Air Force flight attendant next to a New Zealander. Okay, and then a airman, an unknown, just known to God. More Royal Airmen. New Zealander, Royal Airmen unknown, Royal Airmen, two South Africans, um, let's see, and more, uh, more Airmen, mostly Airmen I see in the distance. Well, mm -hmm. These Royal Air Air Airmen as well, because uh, you know the British did have the, the power in the sky. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, and coming up here, I see an Australian, Australian, uh, well, Australian Army, uh, Australian Imperial Force, F e, e. L. Black, died 1944, and next to a New Zealander. And also, we have another uh, Jewish grave right here. The Jewish, the ones that are Jewish always tend to stand out against the ones that are. That have crosses, but also there are ones that don't even have any crosses or Jewish insignias. Well, just like this man right here, or South African. Oh, and we've got someone from Cyprus. Yes, a Turkish Cypriot right here. Yes, I have not seen a Turkish Cypriot grave since I was in the Czech Republic a couple of years ago. Oh, a gardener. Roll well, on. Uh, that's that's my mom's surname, <laughs> but. Uh, my mom doesn't really have much British ancestry, it's mostly Irish. Australian, British, Australian, British, South African, South African. Okay. South African, British, South African, British Airman, British Airman, Australian, Australian, um, British, Australian, Australian, New Zealander, British Airman, South African, South African, British. British, South African, Royal Australian Air Force, British Air Force, British Air Force, and uh, a few more Air Force, it's the uh, most of them here. A, there's a Jewish, British Air Force right here, a few South Africans. Oh, and this was laid recently by like relatives of a uh, British Air Force man. Okay, and yeah. So, most Australian. Hmm. I hope I don't get arrested for like uh, jumping over the fence. Just for this. I mean, I'm not disrespecting the graves. I'm like paying my respects and 
one of those Commonwealth servicemen who died in Yugoslavia. But um, some people are misunderstood. You know? Like literally, if they wanted to keep the cemetery open, literally, just hire somebody like a grand's man who can open the gate at night and close it at five. It's simple. But uh, literally, it's, I'm inside hours, so you know, it's not break and enter. And then a few, we've got Navy over here. Um, still British Navy. Well, oh, Royal British Navy, yeah, that's how you see it. Royal Air Force. Um, two people buried here. Actually, Air Force. A New Zealand atheist. Don't like to put it that way, but that's how it is. And so, um, just raised some remembrance today. We had the Canadians give us a, give us the Serbs a, uh, a reef. Um, seems like that's Australian to me. I'm not going to touch that. Uh, the British Embassy in remembrance, yes. The, uh, I think it must be the Italian. Um, Russian, I guess. No, no, so in Polish, Metropolitan. Um, Canada, really Austrian colors of Denmark. Uh, well, it, this is, uh, is uh, well, yeah, probably British. And all. Oh, and we've got a lone. I, I knew that there was some boy that was buried here, like infant son of John and Janet uh, Sloss died 19th of August 1954. So sometimes in war cemeteries, you do get like infant burials of children who died. Not because of war, but because, but well, basically, like a mother and father were living on a military site, and the son dies after birth. So instead of sending the body back to England, they would actually bury him in the nearest uh, cemetery. And uh, we've got a woman here, Melanie Wood, who was quite young, died in 1977. Have a loving, beloved daughter, wife, and mother. I uh, don't know why she's buried here, but maybe that's because of. Uh, she had like a relative buried here as well. Yes. And these tombstones, uh, they look different to the other ones. So, uh, uh, yeah, oh yes, these are non commonwealth -like troops. So we had this Peter John Frank, A30, and his wife, Julian Patricia, who died in the Scotia earthquake in 1963. Uh, this one died in 1961, but that was a three-year-old girl, Cassandra. Eugene Camp. Wife of Vladimir Camp, also buried in the cemetery. E. Matthews, 1941, 1948. Uh, civilians, so these are just civilians. This is why their tombstones are different. L.J. McLaughlin, Florence Mary Gilbert. Oh yeah, it's 1935, so this is like pre-war. And then a few uh, separate people. No, we got a strand buried right here to the memory. Um, I guess he's not only buried here, it's a memorial stone. So another, a few people here, bought, he died after World War One, and then this man died just on the 8th of May 1948. Uh, C. Buccaneal, buried in Belgrade Cemetery, the glory. Yeah, I remember reading a diplomat was actually buried in the cemetery. Oh. Uh, you have to look it up online on the Commonwealth War Graves Commission website. So quite a good number of Commonwealth forces buried here. I actually had no idea the British were even involved in Yugoslavia. So, I hate to end this on a sour note, but I just ripped a hole in the, the back of my jeans just by climbing that fence. Uh, the risks I take to bring you the best. Now, I need to go buy a few pair of pants in Belgrade. Today or tomorrow, depending on what time it is. Um, or I could basically just get some needle and thread and stitch it all back up as usual.